this uh, new technology and do our best to facilitate a smooth meeting. Um, during this meeting, all participants on Zoom, except for board members and South Coast State Community staff will be placed on mute by the host, which means you will not be able to mute or unmute yourselves manually. But after each item, the committee chair will announce public comment. Um, for those of you on Zoom, if you'd like to make a public comment, uh, please click the raise hand button at the bottom of your screen. This will signal that you would like to provide com uh, public comment and you'll be added to the list. If you're using Zoom on your smartphone, please tap raise hand button also at the bottom of your screen. And for those of you calling in on the phone line only, please dial star nine on your keypad and that will signal that you would like uh, to make public comment. Uh, we ask that if you are making public comment, please adhere to the speaker time limit. We also ask and expect all participants to adhere to the normal guidelines for public decorum, specifically treat people with uh, respect uh, civility and courtesy. If you cannot adhere to these, it's up to the chair, but you may be uh, dropped from the meeting. And with that, I turn it back over to you, Chairman. Thank you so much, uh, Matt, appreciate that. With that, uh, welcome to today's technology committee meeting. Today is January 22nd. We welcome um, those here on committee members, those uh, staff, as well as uh, members of the public who are joining us. With that, I'd like to call a for a roll call, please. Supervisor Bartlett. Here. Board member Krakow. Here. Mayor, Pro Mayor McAllen. Here. Council member Mitchell. She's not here yet. Mayor Pro Tem Rodriguez. Here. And council member Busquiano. Here. We have a quorum. Thank you, ma'am. With that, uh, members, I'd like to turn your attention to today's technology committee agenda and uh, call on uh, the first item, item number one. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thank you very much. With this item, um, my name is Lisa Mirasola and I'm presenting for staff. Uh, staff is proposing to renew the fuel cell partnership membership for 2021 and receive and file the executive board meeting agendas and recent activity updates. Next slide, please. By way of background, um, Fuel Cell Partnership was uh, created over 20 years ago. AQMD has been a longtime member. Currently, there are 19 executive board members who have decision-making authority, and you can see their logos on the left. Uh, there are also 36 additional full and associate members who participate in different committees and subcommittees and pay commensurately less um, membership dues. And uh, next slide. So by way of highlights for last year, uh, the partnership um, continued to deploy fuel cell vehicles and um, uh, trucks and buses as well. And monthly teleconferences were arranged to provide additional time for members to focus on um, medium and heavy duty fuel cell electric vehicles. And also the um, the staff at the Fuel Cell Partnership worked with members to gain input and support to um, basically implement the Fuel Cell Revolution document, uh, which provides a vision out to 2030. And this resulted in development of a new organizational proposal. Next slide, please. And so, uh, for other recent activities, uh, normally you'd see a, a slide with some uh, recent event pictures, but we're now living in a more wor virtual world. So the Fuel Cell Partnership uh, increased their virtual events, continuing some from previous years, providing um, updates about hydrogen station status and fuel cell vehicle rollouts, uh, and also start a new policy series uh, with other um, uh, organizations like California Hydrogen Business Council and Ca California Hydrogen Coalition to uh, look at a policy series on hydrogen and added extra webinars with other California partners to focus on different aspects of California's hydrogen and, and fuel cell world. 
Next slide. So the October steering team, I mean, executive board meeting, um, our representative there was Mayor Pro Tem uh, Rodriguez and the chair um, for the 2020 year continued um, to be Sandra Berg from CARB and the vice chair, Jerome Grigoy from Hyundai. The executive board members have um, added extra meeting this year to provide input at uh, strategic times to guide the Project Phoenix review and looked at the new organizational structure to confirm core principles, provide guidance, and um, delegate uh, oversight to the steering team, which reports um, also to the executive board. Next slide, please. An extra meeting was held in December to basically invite two additional new members to join and upgrade one additional member. So the Fuel Cell Partnership is uh, inviting Daimler Trucks North America to the executive board level, as well as upgrading Southern California Gas to executive board level from um, associate member and also adding Ford to the steering team level. So they're, um, they were a previous member who is rejoining at the steering team level. And the Project Phoenix update was shorter, but provided additional guidance uh, for that effort. Next slide, please. And so the goals for 2021 are, are to complete the transition to the, a new nonprofit public-private organization. The uh, members felt it was very important to continue to be both a public-private organization and not just a trade association. So the additional goals are continuing some of the previous goals, but um, emphasizing in the vehicle rollout to um, add sufficient hydrogen infrastructure to support heavy duty fuel cell buses and trucks. And also to provide additional um, emphasis on you know, providing forums, but also including national coordination and expansion. And reach target markets but place greater emphasis across vehicle applications. And next slide. And so with that, staff recommends the action to execute a contract uh, with Frontier Energy, who acts be on behalf of the Fuel Cell Partnership to renew our membership for 2021 at the same executive level, not to exceed $70,000, and also receive and file the executive board meeting agendas and quarterly updates for 2020. And with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you so much, Ms. Mirasola. I'm, we all know and recognize uh, Mayor Pro Tem Rodriguez, who sits on um, the California Fuel Cell Partnership Board on um, behalf of the AQMD. Uh, Ms. Rodriguez, I see your hand up. Would you like to add to a comment to this agenda item? Yes, uh, thanks, uh, Chairman, and, and Happy New Year to you and uh, to, to everyone here. Uh, excited to be back here and, and looking forward to a productive year on the committee and, and our governing board. And uh, as the last, second to last slide, slide seven, if we could bring that back up just for a quick moment. Just wanted to, as I'm uh, briefly commenting uh, here, I think to me, this is uh, really the focal point of what uh, we should be spending our time on. So. Uh, I'm eager to move from the uh, importance of uh, the, the nonprofit status and spending quite a bit of time on that and, and, and transitioning into these uh, other important items, uh, bullets two, uh, three, and four, uh, as is the uh, you know, ultimate purpose of uh, the fuel cell partnership. So uh, again, increasing the, the, the Fuel, fuel cell vehicles, cars, buses, trucks that, that increase commercialization and also uh, enhancing availability of hydrogen stations infrastructure really, I think will allow us to have an, an all of the above approach uh, to meeting our air quality goals. So again, excited to be uh, appointed to uh, this group, this working group and uh, working with Matt and our team uh, to continue to, to press uh, for um, tangible results. Um, I'm, I'm pleased to see the inclusion of SoCal Gas and Daimler Trucks as a new executive board member and, and Ford as a full member on the steering committee. Excited to be part of the restructuring again into an actual nonprofit with a focus on California, 
but also expanding to a national scope. And while they're, they're looking beyond uh, our state, really my, my focus will be, you know, making sure that there's uh, something tangible we can bring back to our service area to enhance the opportunities to meet our goals. So in addition to light duty vehicle support, uh, transitioning to medium and heavy duty vehicles and, and infrastructure to address local criteria pollutant needs will be a continued focus uh, while, while I'm uh, participating and also support uh, supporting the new and uh, varied ways of community outreach and engagement, including social media influencers. So uh, with that, I'd uh, like to just make a motion to uh, support uh, the uh, continued participation uh, as outlined in uh, the item. Thank you. And thank you so much uh, for your leadership uh, and commitment to serving on this board, Mr. Rodriguez. I see Mayor McCallan's hand up. Um, Mr. McCallan. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, as you can see from uh, my background picture, uh, the San Bernardino County Transportation Authority is very much into zero emission uh, vehicles, we are developing a, a, a train uh, or a, a multiple unit to be used on Metrolink uh, Railroad uh, commuter rail. And uh, personally, I believe that the, the future of zero emission is in hydrogen fuel cell and not in electric batteries, uh, electric vehicles. And I, I think that's the real future. And I'm, I'm very supportive of, of that. And I was just wondering, on the uh, website, they say that uh, there's been a total of 8,931 fuel cell powered vehicles sold in California with the peak being in 2018, but it fell off in 2019 uh, from 2368 to 2089 and had a drastic fall off in 2020. I would expect the 2020 fall off was due probably to COVID, but uh, any ideas on why there was a drop off in, in 19? Uh, is it uh, infrastructure problems or is it something to do with the technology of the fuel cells? Uh, any thoughts, Matt? Well, I can, I'll let um, Lisa and Naveen chime in and also Wayne, because he's actual a fuel cell driver. Um, but the initial uh, push by the major auto manufacturers, so namely Toyota and, and Honda and Hyundai, uh, I know there were some initial problems with uh, some of the early fuel cell stacks. Uh, there was also problems with uh, refueling where the nozzle, as Wayne knows, would get stuck on the vehicle until they fixed the infrastructure. So I think the initial push, there was a lot of enthusiasm and then the reality of a new technology kind of set in, and I think that dampened the spirit of some of the uh, early adopters, but I can, uh, I can let Wayne uh, test to some of the challenges that he's faced. Thanks, Matt. Yeah, Matt, unfortunately, was the uh, recipient of some phone calls late at night where I literally had two miles of range at the uh, Lake Forest uh, hydrogen refueling station, not quite sure how I was gonna get home. But uh, I think there were actually a couple of other factors. One is I think that the limited infrastructure for the fueling had a big part because when you're looking at you know, where you can actually refuel and whether or not you're gonna make it, that does have an impact. So I think that the limited infrastructure had some um, impact on it along with the technical challenges that uh, Dr. Miyasato described. But I also think that there was another factor at play and that was actually when um, the Trump administration uh, tried to remove or actually removed California's um, waiver. One of the things that it did was it sort of identified certain automakers as supportive of Trump's efforts. California itself was a big consumer of fuel cell vehicles. And those companies that sided with Trump, like Toyota and GM and, and others, California said, you are off the purchase list. Mm -hmm. And so even we, uh, which we follow the state guidelines. You know, I moved from driving the Mirai, the Toyota, which I liked, uh, to driving the Honda Clarity, which I like, but I like the Mirai a little bit more. So I think you saw a decrease in the number of vehicles that were purchased as a result of that effort. Um, but I'm hopeful now that hopefully that'll be behind us and that with an increased infrastructure, 
uh, that we'll see that increase. And, and Matt has more to add. Only staff just remind me, Mayor, that uh, during 2019, there was a severe hydrogen shortage. Uh, there were there were two significant, um, you might recall, fires at, refi uh, at the hydrogen production facilities, which essentially crippled the hydrogen supply to Southern California. Uh, that has since been addressed uh, through technological improvements, but that was one of the major reasons as well. And then the availability or loss of uh, one of the electrolyzers up in Northern California also right. impacted the Bay Area. So I think those combination of factors had an impact. Well, thank you very much. And obviously the infrastructure is one of the limiting factors in all that. We need to get the infrastructure out there. And that's something we're uh, looking at in terms of our zero emission multiple unit also. I have a question on uh, what's the budget of this organization? 70, our contribution, I want to say is 70,000. Is that Lisa, right? Lisa, what's the overall? The overall um, operating budget? The overall has been pretty stable for the last few years at 1.3 million. And, and they are staffed uh, how and by how many? Uh, Frontier Energy provides staff. Uh, I believe there are nine staff members. Um, most of the budget does go to staff labor. Okay. Thank you. That's all I have. Thank you, sir. Um, so with that, um, oh, I see Ms. Mitchell joined us. Thank you so much, ma'am, for joining us. Uh, with that, um, we do have a motion on, on, on the floor here. Let's turn to uh, public comment. Any members of the public would like to speak on item number one? Um, if you can uh, bring them in now. I believe we have one hand raised. Colin User. Hello. Uh, can you hear me, please? Yes, sir. Loud and clear. Welcome. Uh, thank you. Uh, Happy New Year, and thank you for all your efforts. I appreciate uh, what you're doing for the air quality here. Uh, my name is Ranji George. I, as I uh, may have mentioned, I've been working with Technology Advance. I used to work with Technology Advancement Office for over 25 years and focused mainly on batteries, fuel cells, and natural gas. Uh, I have a comment, uh, uh, first a, co a point of clarification and then a comment. Um, actually, the California fuel cells were formed in the mid-90s. I was personally involved in that. We were one of the forming, um, uh, we were the co-founders of California. It was led by CARB. Catherine Dunduity was the ch uh, from chair or the uh, president. And um, so, uh, so you may want to look back a little further than uh, in the... Uh, in the note, it says March 2000, but I don't think that's correct. Um, secondly, I would like uh, the board members to more lobby harder for the Inland Empire. All the, I know these stations have been very limited, but it's so unfortunate that uh, the, the Orange County, Southern and North, they are getting six or seven. But whereas in the Inland Empire, we hardly have any one even. Uh, one was in Ontario that went down. And in fact, that's the reason some of the... Mo a fuel cell manager actually denied me the fuel cell car. I wanted one, and they didn't give it to me because I wasn't quite near it. So uh, I would urge you to do that. There are lawyers, doctors, uh, professors, people who are buying Tesla in bulk. So uh, I would appreciate if fuel cells can also enter, and I urge the members of this area to speak more loudly in California fuel cell partnership to have at least three or four stations along the way. It's a heavily traveled corridor. Um, and I'm talking of light duty. Now, the, of course, the heavy duty, there's a heavy travel corridor, too. So hopefully both uh, stations can come in. in um, also, so in summary, I would like to say that it's kind of disappointing. California uh, is so behind the rest of the world. We started it. I was the uh, scientist uh, leading this hydrogen fuel cells in the mid-'90s. And because of that, it came about. I mean, for 60 years, hydrogen was treated as very unsafe, and we showed that hydrogen is safe. So that is our contribution. It's AQMD's contribution. And now we have fallen behind. I urge you to vigorously support it, and I appreciate Mr. McCallum's comment that hydrogen fuel cells is the way of the future. I totally agree. And Mr. Rodriguez's leadership. So please, please speak up for Inland Empire. I appreciate that. Thank you, sir, for your comments. Uh, any other member of the public like to speak on item number one? 
Okay, I don't see any others. So we have a motion. We have a second to approve item one. That's before us now. I'll second it, Mr. Chair. Thank, thank you, sir. With that, we have a motion and a second. Uh, roll call vote, please. Supervisor Bartlett? Yes. Board member Krakow? Yes. May Mayor McAllen? Yes. Council member Mitchell? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Rodriguez? Yes. And Council member Buscaino? Yes. Item passes five eyes. Thank you so much. With that, let's now turn to our second and final item today's agenda. Um, is Ping here? Yes, hi. Good morning, everyone. There you are. Good to see you. My name is Ping Gui, and I will be presenting on item number two, execute one additional contract for the combustion category of the VW program and to amend a program-related support contract. Next slide, please. To provide some background, on December 4th, 2020, the board approved for contracting 4.9 million for the replacement of 66 on-road heavy duty trucks and the repower of two marine engines. However, previously one other project was deemed eligible, the South Coast AQMD couldn't move forward with that project until now. Since 2019, GNA has been assisting South Coast AQMD with the two categories under the VW program through webinar technical assistance and statewide outreach. GNA is a leading environmental consulting firm with extensive experience about the inner workings of incentive programs and has an established broad network of stakeholders, including the well-known Ask News website to assisting outreaching statewide potential eligible applicants. Continuing the support will be needed to ensure the successful deployment of future VW program solicitations. Next slide, please. Staff proposes to award this one additional truck replacement project and to add up to 50,000 to GNA's contract for program related support. Last slide, please. The recommended actions are to execute the VW program combustion category contract for up to 85,000 for one on road heavy duty truck replacement project and amend GNA's contract adding up to 50,000 in funds. And that concludes my presentation. I'd be happy to take any questions. Thank you so much, Ping. Any questions, members? Uh, I don't see any hands. Fantastic, amazing presentation. The point where there's no questions, you probably answered <laughs> all the questions that we may have had. Uh, any member of the public like to speak on item number two? Please raise your hand. Okay, I don't see any callers on item number two. I'd like to entertain a motion to approve item number two. I'll move the item, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Second, Mr. McCallum, thank you. Roll call vote on item number two. Supervisor Bartlett? Yes. Board Member Krakow? Yes. Mayor McCallum? Yes. Council Member Mitchell? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Rodriguez? Yes. Council Member Buscaino? Yes. Item passes six ayes. Thank you, ma'am. With that, turning to item number three on the agenda, any other business uh, before this committee, please um, come forward now. I don't see any hands. I do want to recognize, of course, our dear friend and colleague, Judy Mitchell, her last tech meeting. Um, and as part of her victory lap over the course of the last month, I do want to recognize Judy again, as we did in the um, legislative committee, uh, your, um, your commitment and dedication to not only our um, South Coast Air Quality Management District as a governing board member, but of course, your leadership on the state level as a, a member of the um, Air Resources Board, uh, great partnership and influence that you've had um, been able to deploy technologies, uh, not only here again within this committee, but also throughout the state to do all we can to advance technologies to reduce our emissions in our area. So. We love you. We thank you um, for your commitment and we are going to miss you immensely. Um, so thanks again, Judy, for your, for your leadership. 
Thank you very much, uh, uh, Joe. It's been a real pleasure to serve and Sheila Kuehl has uh, accused me of dragging this out so long so I can accolades. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you so much. And it's been a pleasure working with all of my colleagues as well and the staff. So it's, it's been my honor. Appreciate you, thank you. Okay, members, um, with that, uh, we'll turn to general public comment. Uh, any members of the public would like to speak on a non-agenda item? I do see two callers. Um, let's start with call in user one. My, my, yes, uh, Ranji George. Um, can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Out and clear. Hello. Yeah, thank you. Um, Again, um, um, my name is Ranji George. I was with the T TAO for 25 years. I just want to thank Ms. Mitchell for her stately leadership, for being fair, for being neutral, for listening to all sides. That's a very valuable trait, and we appreciate your leadership. Hopefully, you'll continue to uh, participate in these discussions. Um, I have one request for the technology committee, because you are, you, you are the committee that leads the focus on this. Please uh, emphasize global warming a lot more. Unfortunately, and I, with deep um, um, uh, sense of grief, I would say uh, AQMD has been lagging behind uh, California and now Biden's, I think, on, on climate change. We have been emphasizing local air quality, um, um, you know, cleanup, and that's a very important goal. But we could and we should also emphasize climate change. And because we didn't do that, uh, I believe the fuel cell technology lagged. We were so heavy into natural gas and cleaning it up, and I was part, involved in it towards the last part of my career. But I would say that if you had given both importance, we would have done well in fuel cells, and a lot more f uh, fuel cells would have been sold here. Then, secondly, at a state level, the state always uses battery when they said ZEV. All the last 30 years, if you, again, um, if you look at the spending on ZEV, 80% uh, um, went to light-duty battery vehicles and charging stations. So I hope um, there are members here who can uh, redress that inequity, that balance, and put fuel cells both in light-duty and heavy-duty back on agenda in a strong way. And then we'll have success in both technologies. Uh, I would hope that would be the focus from now on to bring up a global warming in your discussions. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, our second caller, uh, Fred Manassian, please um, unmute him. Fred, the floor is yours. Three minutes. Thank you. Fred, do you want? Mr. Manassian? You have to unmute yourself, Fred. There Can you, you hear me? Yeah. Loud and clear. Good afternoon, committee members. My name is Fred Manassi, and I'm a retired employee of the AQMD from the Technology Advancement Office, and I'm also Mayor Mitchell's board assistant at the AQMD and the Air Resources Board. Uh, Mayor Mitchell, since this is your last committee meeting, I would like to thank you for being your board assistant for the past 14 months. During my time at the AQMD, I was always impressed with your dedication and commitment to air quality issues. But I came to appreciate it even more since I became your board assistant. You are a champion of clean air and have seen firsthand how committed you have been to the success of the AQMD and CARB. I have been very impressed with the level of your involvement. And during this time, Never once did you refuse to meet with any entity either supporting or opposing any of the AQMDs and CARB's proposed regulations and programs. I par particularly enjoyed our one-on-one -on -one discussions after these meetings, and I hope they were helpful in your decision-making process. I'll miss you a lot, and I have truly enjoyed being your board assistant. Congratulations on your retirement, and I wish you many years of health and happiness. Thank you. Fred, thank you so much. Those are very kind words. It uh, has been a pleasure to work with Fred and he has brought some very good ideas to me as we're struggling through some of the issues, both at CARB and here at AQMD. And 
So he's, he's really been a great help to me. He has some wonderful experience in his background as, uh, as he worked here at AQMD in the technology area for many years. And, uh, and it's been a, a real pleasure to work with you, Fred, and, uh, and get to know you a little bit better as well. So thank you for those, for those comments. Very nice, Fred. Thank you so much for joining us. Okay, uh, I don't see any other member of the public. Like, uh, so with that, we'll close our general public comment. Um, that is uh, a wrap. Uh, next meeting will be held Friday, February 19th. Uh, and we'll see you for sure before then, the governing board meeting. So with that, members, um, colleagues, uh, staff, and to the public, we are now adjourned. Thank you. Have a, a blessed, safe day and rest of the weekend. Be well. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks, Thanks everyone. Councilman. Thank you. Stay safe, everyone. Take care. End recording. Great job, Paul and Mark and Anthony.